on peak, please. So the, the supervisor's budget is just not for the supervisor, it's for the administration and staff that's around this, the board. So we have employees that make an employee in training County costs about 100 grand by the time they're out the door. Um, and there's uh, part of the legal uh, work that's done um, that, that I don't know the number off the top of my head how much that is, but uh, amazing as it sounds, half a million dollars doesn't go very far in today's world. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm not uh, privy to all that information. Um, uh, some of it I could find in the budget. It's not clear cut from someone on the outside looking in, trying to see where the money goes, so I can't answer that exactly. Uh, I know that uh, you know the money that goes to the law firm from Fresno that serves as our county council is really hard to track. And uh, we've, we've tried, we've asked for some of it, um, so I'm, I'm sorry, once I became, if I get on the board, I would hope I would have more inside information and have a better answer for that meeting. Mr. Grove, yes. what are your views on harmful effects of alcohol, and how do you reconcile that with your personal business, how do you reconcile that with your personal business oh. interests? So, a lot of people confuse the wine business with the alcohol business, which they are in us in the wine business. Look at it differently, we feel that we're in the food business. Alcohol has a very harmful effect on a lot of people, we understand that. The alcohol industry puts in around $10 billion worth of revenue into the federal government, so they uh, have these programs coming out. But in the wine business, if and study after study shows that if you drink my product as recommended by the federal government, you will lengthen your life two years. so other people and entrepreneurs can move forward. So economic development, uh, in, in four years' time, if we have high-speed fiber in this, in this town, that will allow a lot of jobs to come along. When you have a cell tower, you have jobs. When you have a planning book that says, hey, we see this all the time, that people come to this county and say, I want to start a business, I want 10 employees. We don't have any place for that person to buy property to do the job that they want to do. So these are the situations that we must build this uh, foundation so somebody can come in and say, yes, uh, I want to come to Trinity County. I don't want to wait a year to get it done. Here's the piece of property that you need to move forward with. Those, those and the infrastructure, again, of, of a sewer system is so people can build houses and move forward. Thanks. 
Mr. Gross, <coughs> what economic development has more supervisors succeeded with during your past term? I, again, uh, my view is it's economic development is not, the board doesn't come in and, and build water parks and in, in businesses. So in economic development, we have uh, allowing legal business to take place. We, there's 454 illegal cannabis businesses in this county now. Uh, people may, you know, have their issues with that. Uh, the moving forward on the infrastructure is what's key uh, for other businesses to come in. Thank you. Um, this is for both Board of Supervisors. Fiscal year 17-18 general fund department budget requests show a deficit of $12 million. How is Board of Supervisors covering that shortage? I would say that's wrong. The general fund is not a deficit. Is that it? That's, well, it, this guy don't you know when you're done. <laughs> well, the premise of the question is that our general fund spending is around eight million dollars. So to say that we're spending twenty and robbing it from someplace else is just out and out not true. So we are in balance with our general fund, and actually last year we carried over in savings of about one point six million dollars. Uh, this year, you know, we don't know how much we'll carry over, but. We are not in deficit spending in general. Great. And I'm guessing this information might come from the, the latest CAFR, um, which is the, uh, it just left me. It's an annual financial report. Thank you. And so um, I'm not sure where, like I said, it's hard to follow the money. Um, this has been a problem for a long time. I know the uh, previous supervisor actually said at one of the meetings, not Supervisor Groves, but the president's predecessor, that when they re, um, they put the budget up and they reformat it, she said, oh, oh good, um, I like this format, I understand it better. And I was just shocked. As a supervisor, you should understand it completely. Mm -hmm. So it, it's complicated, things get moved around, things come in, things come out. Um, uh, money gets shuffled around all the time, so um, I'm sorry to say I can't thoroughly answer that question because, like uh, I said before, I'm not privy to the money moving around. Thank you. This is for both Board of Supervisors. What is the Trinity County Public Fil 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 <laughs> Facilities Corporation, and when did citizens of Trinity County authorize the Board of Supervisors to borrow money against our courthouse. What is being done? Here? Yeah. I don't understand why. <laughs> I can't understand the words. Um, Do you want me to read it again? You, you want to go first? Or? Sure. Okay. Um, I, I became uh, familiar with the uh, Trinity County Public Facility Corporation when we started looking into the top bond. Um, the Certificate of Participation Bond. Uh, that happened um, at about 2005 when Trinity County was about to um, go into uh, the debt they were never going to come out of. So they ended up selling the bond because it was problems with financing the hospital and paying debt. Um, I don't know, that's one of my questions. How, do you, how does the government make a corporation? How does that corporation uh, use the board, the board of supervisors and the corporation use two of our public buildings as collateral to finance a top bond, which I feel was done illegally because none of the money was done to work on the buildings, which is what a top bond is supposed to do. Um, I don't know how they did it. They, they just did it. Um, I have heartburn over that. Um, now we rent our public buildings, so I don't know how they did it. So 2005 is before, of course, Peter K. or I were involved deeply in this. But the county was teetering around bankruptcy, and a lot of people in the county felt that bankruptcy would have been the best uh, move forward. I can just tell you what we're doing today. We're in the process uh, with the treasurer, and we're going to refinance those, and the courthouse will probably come out of, of loan, and we'll just have the one building on to uh, finish, finish off uh, that love. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>
supervisor's role, so, you know, that's just a nice little gotcha question that, you know, makes no sense, so, we'll move on. Okay, Mr. Groves, why does Trinity Center have a 4G cell tower and so many other, and so, and so many newly repaired roads compared to Lewiston? Well, Lewiston has one coming. So we can cross that off. That was part of my the cell tower and we were in training center was built before I was a supervisor. So the cell tower is coming here. Uh, I think the people in training center would not think that their roads are better than the Lewiston. <laughs> I, I get those phone calls a lot that their roads aren't so good. So again, nice little gotcha question. Let's move on. Um, is it the Forest Service paid for the cell tower? No. Not to, before my time, it's not to my knowledge. For both board of supervisors, candidates agree to fair to code of fair campaign practices. One of your supporters recently used character defamation, libel, slander, or scurrilous attacks against another candidate's personal or family life. What, what would you do? It sounds like a. a you understand the question? Do you have to read it again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Should I answer? Um, it's a, it, <laughs> I actually didn't sign that, but I would follow it just as a decent human being. If I knew who the person was and they attacked somebody, um, there's one thing to disagree with them, but to go after them um, with something that's even libelous. Uh, you know, it gets the people start throwing mud, and it's kind of a shame. And I hope people don't take that kind of information when it comes out as information. <laughs> it's just mud. <clears throat> um, I will say uh, this is the second time Kay and I have uh, competed, and Kay's been very gracious, and we've run very clean, issues oriented campaigns. Uh, and, We'll try to be respectful of each other's views, and uh, I don't tolerate any lies or scurrilous activities in uh, anybody that's tied to my campaign. Thank you. Mr. Grove, why are you a member of an ad hoc committee on cannabis ordinances, and why do you meet in secret rather than open meetings to the public? Uh, to get things done. Uh, the uh, cannabis has gone on a long, a long time. Uh, I've been involved in writing regulations from this since 06. Uh, this is how government works. Uh, that to move things forward, you put together an ad hoc, and we have several, and over the years, this is the way it is. It moves forward. Uh, Plans get put together, then it goes into the public view, where the public and planning commission looks at it. We have independent people appointed to the planning commission. Uh, then it comes back to the public at the supervisor. So it's a very open and transparent. Uh, now, what I find is, is that people agree with you, think it's very fair. 
and people that don't like what came out, then they find that it's all done secretly. Uh, but the reality is, is we didn't have a CAO, we don't have planning staff, and we're, as our state center says, we're trying to fly a plane while we're building it. And the fact is, is we've gone from ground zero to where we are and actually leading the state in a lot of our activities uh, of how we're moving forward, and that's only done by getting down and, and working in these committees. Can I answer something? Because it's about ad hoc committees. Can I say something about that? Sure. Um, I, I see the need for ad hoc committees, but not the way we have them now. We have more. I've been going for seven years. Um, there's rarely an ad hoc committee, and now we have seven. The problem I see with the ad hoc committees is the reports out are not very informative. So the problem with closed session is something is reported out, um, direction given to staff. But staff, they don't tell you what the direction was, and they show. So in my opinion, that's keeping the people um, from getting the information we should, even though it was a closed session meeting. The same thing with the ad hoc, but the thing with the ad hoc, when you have uh, just two supervisors and they aren't reporting out properly in public, then they aren't reporting out properly to the other supervisors. And, and, and people have come up to in the meetings and they have spoken out about um, not agreeing and liking the um, ad hoc committees and they don't think they're serving the purpose. So that's the opinion of one person, but the other opinion of many people is they don't care for them and they don't function properly. Can I have 30 seconds behind? Pardon? Can I have 30 seconds behind that? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, if we have 30 questions, keep in mind. Okay. Uh, so the other thing that, that's assumed is the ad hocs are just, you know, the Illuminati. But our ad hoc committee has had several public meetings. Anybody that has asked to meet with us in the cannabis, anti-cannabis, in the middle world has had open uh, access to, to us. Last question for both. Why is our county council a law firm, not an individual employed by the county as per county code? How much does this cost taxpayers annually? The reason is pretty simple. Over the years, we've had individuals, and I hope none of them are here tonight. Uh, <laughs> the problem when you have one lawyer is everybody has a skill set. And so when you hire a legal team, a firm, you, you hire a lawyer that is a plan, you have a planning expert, you have an um, expert in personnel, you have an expert in finance, and so for the same amount of money, uh, you get a wide spectrum. Uh, off the top of my head, it, it varies from year to year, uh, it's depending on how many court cases, how many uh, child uh, protective service cases come along. Uh, there's a long list of what uh, county council has to do, and cannabis uh, is obviously set forward on that. So it's, I want to throw a wild number out there, it's around a half a million dollars. And I will say I have no idea how much county council is being paid because it's really hard to track it, but it's a lot. Um, the problem is, by law, and if you go to the county code, you can follow the law to the state code and the uh, attorney general opinion that they cite, that when you use someone outside your county council because they don't have that skill set, that's a special need. You're supposed to make that special need known to the public and you're supposed to do a separate contract for each one of those needs and that never happens. And you can go read it. Um, so that is a problem. Uh, you can have one. We're not supposed to have one as our law firm. The problem with having a law firm from Fresno, none of those people live here. None of those people have any idea what it's like to be here and they, they don't care. Uh, our county council, Margaret Long, she also does three other counties. So it's just a business for them. Um, I would like to find a, law, a lawyer that lives here, that has uh, roots here, or at least cares about being here. Uh, if they need special help, then they do it properly and follow the law. And we know how much people are paid. Thank you. Oh. Oh, this is from all three sheriffs. We're moving on to the sheriffs. What is your position on the Second Amendment concealed carry permit, starting with Mr. Hanover? I'm all for the Second Amendment. Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, share, continue the current process we have. Uh, 
and uh, anybody that has a, a facility robots permit now will just carry it over. Thank you. Um, I'm an advocate of the Second Amendment, and um, as a Supreme Law will end, therefore I will um, embrace and advocate mm -hmm. constitutional carry. However, I will continue with the permitting process for our individuals who wish to have that occur so that they're protected outside of this jurisdiction. And I also support the Second Amendment, the right to bear uh, arms. <clears throat> I will continue the CCW process as it is right now. I will take a look at all existing uh, CCWs and ensure that they're properly issued. And then after that, uh, we'll follow what the guidelines from the state under DOJ. And then uh, when you come and see me, we'll sit down and talk about uh, your need to, to do that. And I see no reason why I wouldn't be issuing another CCW. This is for all three. Trinity has the highest gun death rate and highest homicide in California. What will you do to lower that rate besides paying for more deputies? Um, perhaps per capita it was up there, but I, I'm not aware of it being the highest. Uh, you know, some of these are accidental, some of these are suicide. I think we need to really focus on behavioral health issues and get help to the people that seriously uh, have a, a desire to, uh, to uh, end their life. Uh, we also need to practice better gun safety and train that. Uh, you know, in our schools, I'm looking forward to getting a school resource officer back in there with a juvenile uh, probation officer that can help uh, issue, uh, help uh, deal with issues involving our youth. Um, across the country, if you look at the, uh, the wave of school violence that's going on, a lot of it has to do with uh, juveniles that have behavioral health issues or substance abuse issues. So I very much want to be involved in that. I've already talked to a couple of school districts. Uh, they're in favor of getting a school resource officer in there. Uh, and probation has even uh, come up with a way to fund that for a short period of time until we can find adequate funding to continue the program. But I think it's sorely needed that we do it that way. Mr. Paul. So as far as school safety goes, uh, the school resource officer will not talk to that at all. That just, the school resource officer is good luxury if we had it to deal with some of the issues that we do have up there. I'm currently looking at polls and we spend a lot of time here. And that and resource officer could be helpful, but it won't do it. won't uh, protect anybody from a mass shooting. It just will guarantee that he's the first guy shot. So I think a different tack on that. I think we have much better safety for our children in the schools if, if uh, members of the staff and teachers and whoever wants to arms themselves with a concealed weapon so that if somebody shows up and do bad things, they can be dealt with fast and now. Can you read that sure. question? Trinity has the highest gun death rate and highest homicides in California. What will you do to lower that rate besides beg for more decades? Well, you know, in the first place, you know, we really can't control what people do. So as far as controlling, I mean, I guess that's just the bottom line. We can't control what people do. That's the bottom line. I mean, you know, there's millions of guns out there. People can get their hands on them. If they want to do something, they're going to do it. So, I mean, we do what we do. We respond to calls. Uh, but as far as trying to make people not do bad things with guns, we cannot control that. Mr. Hanover, Trinity has the highest per capita gun death rate in the state. Do you think it's a good idea to give away guns and ammo at your fundraisers? <laughs> Is there a conflict of 
if there is a conflict between federal and state laws, which do you uphold, according to Mr. Fox? It depends on whether or not the law is constitutional. If the law is within the parameters of the Constitution, then the, the federal law is supreme. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Saxon. Most of California laws today are uh, based upon what a federal law is. Uh, so when you're looking at enforcement of it, uh, the Sheriff's Department would be, uh, as your sheriff, I would be enforcing California laws, uh, which are primarily based upon federal uh, guidelines that way. Uh, for example, with commercial vehicle enforcement, uh, California enforces that based upon certain titles of the U.S. Uh, or US codes. So if it comes down to it, my job is to protect the people of, this, of uh, Trinity County. And that's what I'll be doing. I'll be enforcing whatever laws to, to protect you because you're the most important asset that we have. Me. Okay. Go ahead and read that. <laughs> if there, I'm sorry. If there is a conflict between federal and state laws, which do you uphold? Well, I'm gonna. First of all, I'm gonna enforce the uh, state laws, and like uh, they said, uh, you know, a lot of the federal law, laws are the same as federal laws. State laws first. Okay. Did you have some spots? Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm sorry. She lost track. Um, this is for all three sheriffs. Um, which, um, with popular opinion, swinging wildly with statute law following closely, how will you deal with changing legislation? Read that again. With popular opinion swinging wildly and statute law following closely, how will you deal with changing legislation? Mr. Hanks. Now I got
shore up some of the deficiency out there because of those people who are in need. Mr. Yeah, well, I've worked for the sheriff's office for 21 years, and I've been in every stream corner of the county. Uh, I, uh, I've done it for, well, not quite 21 years because the last five years I've been doing a code enforcement program, but it still gets me out there. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of us in some of the spots, but you know, we do what we got to do when we get there. Take right. care of business. Thank you. Mr. Saxon and Mr. Hanover, what education is required for the office of the under sheriff in Trinity County, in Trinity County according to uh, Trinity County personnel? Uh, under sheriff qualifications that I know of is uh, as required a bachelor's degree uh, to be an under sheriff because in the sheriff's office the uh, under sheriff is an administrator of the jail and other functions of the sheriff's office so uh, that position needs to be someone that is educated. The under sheriff that I've chosen for me is very well educated. He's got a dual bachelor's degree and a master's degree in public administration. I would have to disagree with Ron on this because I've got the uh, duty specifications from uh, human resources uh, for the county. Uh, there's no mention of any requirement for a bachelor's degree in there. Uh, there is a requirement that the individual have uh, two years of either management or supervisory experience, as well as a uh, advanced post certificate and a um, post supervisory certificate. Um, so that's where we disagree on that one. Thank you. For all three shows, how do you plan to prioritize law enforcement? Will you go after easy targets like cannabis or focus on violent crimes according to Mr. Fox? My focus will be on property rights in, in the larger sense. In anywhere where property rights comes into play, which could be uh, referred to as an act of commission, or excuse me, an act of violence against the person or the property of another, which all to me falls under the property. That's where my focus will be. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Well, you know, we have uh, different departments that handle different things. Uh, cannabis has got their own department. We've got detectives handle, handle major crimes. I don't think that we're going to say, all right, we're going to, the whole sheriff's office is going to go out through marijuana today. No. We deal with the crimes at hand, and we're not going to focus on marijuana over a major crime. No. As your sheriff, my focus is going to be on crimes against persons and crimes against property. That's the number one issue because that is what directly impacts all of you and everyone that lives in this county and visits this county and travels through this county. The, uh, the cannabis issue, there's a set of ordinances that are in place now. And I think uh, there's, there's several dozens of people that are complying with those ordinances. Uh, at, at some point in time, you have to go after the ones that are not complying, and that's why we have code enforcement officers. They're the ones that will be going out there and addressing that issue. But for normal patrol, it's crimes against persons, crimes against property that will be my number one focus. And then continuing to work with uh, federal agencies on our public lands to go after the groves that are there that are destroying our wilderness area poisoning our streams, and someday it's going to start killing our people, too. Scroll three, please. If you, if you have chosen an undersheriff, can you explain the current working relationship he, she has with current department members? How is morale? Any plans to help with making morale better, Mr. Fox? Morale is basically the manpower issue, I think, and, and my estimation uh, because we're so undermanned that 
you run ragged day all day long, you don't have time to give the people the service they just uh, deserve. Um, as far as the undersheriff thing goes, uh, my selection for undersheriff is going to remain confidential until such time as I change my mind on it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the sheriff that I have picked, he currently works uh, in the detective's office. Uh, from what I can see, he's got a a very well, I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but he's got a very good working relationship with all persons within our sheriff's office, from what I can see. I, I haven't, uh, there's been no negativity that I know of. Uh, a morale issue, like Mark said, it is really coming down to, uh, you know, lack of personnel. You know, uh, and that's just the issue that we're going to have to work with, and it's something that's been plaguing the sheriff's office for the 21 years that I've been there. We get a few deputies, we lose a few, uh, we, we never seem to get ahead. <coughs> okay. Mr. Sachs. Uh, I've selected uh, Sergeant Brian Ward uh, to be my under sheriff if uh, all of you good folks uh, elect me to be the sheriff. He's been with the department for 17 years. He's risen up through the ranks. He understands the jail operations. He understands uh, patrol functions. He's currently the uh, detective uh, supervisor and oversees the canine program. Uh, I think he's a well-rounded individual who uh, understands what, uh, basically what I want in the sheriff's department as well. We'll work together as a team uh, to address some of the morale issues. And I don't think they're always about staffing. I also think morale issues are driven largely from the leadership within an organization and how much support you show to uh, the employees, which carries across to how you perform your duties in the public. So that's my answer. Thank you. For, all, for all three, please. What is your view of private property and the enforcement of asset forfeiture? Mr. Uh, I'm not currently involved with uh, any of that. So. Uh, that typically is, from what I can see, it's been dealt with in the narcotics office. I haven't had any dealings with that. I said for it to be a thing with that. At least as it's currently being currently known to be a thing with that. It's, uh, it's caused a bad focus in the department, uh, we did, uh, I refer to it as policing the profit. We go over here and, and enforce these laws over here because there's something to be gained financially by doing so, all the while not taking care of these actions over here, typically where they have nothing for us to take. So I'm, I'm an advocate, non-supporter of asset support. I think it creates, creates a negative incentive to the police. Uh, on most occasions, I am in favor of asset forfeiture. And why is that? Because there are some bad people out there, very bad people. Now, asset forfeiture, I feel, is a good thing as long as due process is, is put into this play, put into play on this. You cannot uh, interfere with anyone's uh, personal rights, but when you have probable cause and you have a lot of money and a lot of drugs in a vehicle, and I'm not talking cannabis, I'm talking about a lot of the serious other drugs that are coming into our county and through our county right now. Cocaine and heroin are making a huge impact on our county, negative. Uh, so I think that uh, as long as it's monitored and the leader of the organization is the one that has to set the tone and focus appropriately on uh, those types of cases that need to move forward in their asset forfeiture in conjunction with the district attorney's office. <laughs> For all three, please explain your relationship with Forest Service um, LEO and the Fish and Game. How much experience do you have with trespass groves? Um, I have no experience with trespass, trespass groves, but I can tell you I have a lot of experience working with Forest Service and working fish and wildlife, wildlife in other parts of the state. Uh, I, I see that each one of them has a, a certain uh, set of tools to bring to the table, uh, depending on the situation, and there needs to be a good collaboration with them, uh, working on even ground, but understanding that they know 
that when they come into Trinity County, especially the Forest Service, they're coming at the request of the sheriff. And they only have jurisdiction on public lands, but the sheriff can give them the opportunity to, to enforce codes uh, on, on county roads and on state highways. I have many years of experience working on the forest uh, in the chasing cartel roads. Many years of the narcotics division working with the, the Forest Service and Fish and Game, as well as other agencies, federal and state, in, in that uh, endeavor. Uh, lots and lots of experience there. And I have no problem with that. Sure. I've worked. Uh, with Fish and Game, Forest Service, uh, law enforcement, my entire time, the Sheriff's Office. I have a, have and still do have a very good working relationship with these agencies. Uh, I still currently go out on the trespass grows on the forest, uh, and I intend on continuing going out on the forest. To eradicate these trespassing Mr. Saxon, how would you handle assimilation into the sheriff's office if you win this election? You say assimilation, I think of the board, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think it would be a smooth transition. Here's why. Because I've been in Trinity County for 20 years. I know I know practically everybody on the department now. In fact, uh, you know, certain, at least two occasions, I was actually asked by the uh, the sheriff to sit in and uh, uh, help chair uh, promotional exams with the individuals that were coming up for the airport for the sergeant. I think that if they didn't think that uh, I had a good personality and understood uh, the requirements of what each of these ranks entailed, they wouldn't have asked me to sit in and, and, and be a part of this uh, training. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, I know several de deputies in there. Uh, I'm getting a lot of good support uh, from them. Uh, as I said, certain Brian Ward's uh, going to be my under sheriff, and he and I have the same uh, feeling on how to treat people with respect, <laughs> both inside the organization and outside the organization. So I, I feel I won't have any problems assimilating. <laughs> uh, for all three, please. If some organization were to supply you at no cost to the sheriff's department with one durable bag filled with non perishable food for each patrol car that left on shift, would you allow the patrol officer at his or her discretion to give this bag of food out to people the officer believes are in need of the food? Mr. Hanover. Oh, sure. I got some, I'll give it to them. I do it all the time. I buy people lunches. Mr. Potts. I do it now. I keep food in my room. Particularly the homeless people, the people that are trying to need help. Concept, but I like it. I think that yeah, definitely I'm in favor of that 100%. Uh, you know, there's certain logistic things that have to be worked out, but uh, I can see this working being a great community outreach program between the sheriff's department and the community, especially in the outlying areas where there are specific needs. Uh, there's a beef on there. <laughs> anyway, specific needs uh, to deal with the public and, and help out as much as we can. <laughs> For all three sheriffs, candidates agree to code of fair, fair campaign practices. A known supporter recently used character defamation, libel, slander, or scurrilous attacks on a candidate's personal or family life. Uh, what would you do, Mr. Fox? As a candidate? I believe that's what it is. I would be revolt. Uh, we should grow our standard and, and act like a grown up and not uh, be calling each other things. Let's deal with the issues and, and stay on the issues. And you may have disagreed with your opponent, and you may agree with your opponent, but let's keep on the issues. And you, you, you should be no backlash for whoever you support. And that's part of the reason I keep my undershirt on. And sometimes it is.
strikes that didn't get there for the office right now. We're going to do a state of the size and be in that position. So that's why I'm keeping my undershirt. Mr. Saxon. Mark was just saying it is unfortunate that people take sides on these things and take it personal. I think the three of us can agree to disagree, and we've worked in law enforcement for years and years. Uh, I'm not aware of anything from my camp that's been said about the other individuals that are running for the office, but I can tell you if I did hear about something and I knew who it was, I would go personally to them and tell them that's not acceptable. We want to deal with the issues and leave personnel, personalities out of this. Mr. Yeah, uh, you know, I've experienced a little bit of mudslinging. Um, so, you know, and it's, it's really frustrating and it's just not right. And I don't go there. I, don't, I just, it's not right. I, that's all I'm going to say about it. Thank you. And thank you. Um, I just picked this in random. Um, Clerk, recorder, assessor, um, uh, for all three, please. Under what law? Um, should we have a break? Yeah, we'll have a break in place. Please stand by.